So this is the second part of lab six uh, for the four bit multiplier uh, using an FSM controller. So um, if you haven't watched part A, you should watch uh, that before this video because part A goes over how you do uh, multiple bit uh, binary multiplication. So here um, to start with in this uh, video, this is the high level black box diagram for our four bit multiplier uh, FSM. So you can see here, inputs A and B, those are our uh, two four-bit binary numbers that we're going to be multiplying. Uh, we have our clock um, to um, for our uh, FSM controller, and then an enter input that will start the multiplication process. And then here's our outputs that will go to the board and um, light up displays and also the appropriate uh, segments. And we're using Dr. Mealy's uh, universal SSEG uh, display unit as we did in the previous experiment. So here's the lower level uh, structural model of our design. So um, here's the FSM controller and this is what you need to design this uh, module here. Uh, the shift register and also the accumulator. Uh, these modules are provided and we'll look at the Verilog uh, for these modules coming up. And then this is Dr. Mealy's module, the same one that we used in the previous uh, lab. So um, one thing to notice is, there th is that there's some uh, bus mismatches here. Uh, Dr. Mealy's uh, universal seg module here has an input CNT1 that's 14 bits and the output of our Q output of our accumulator is 8 bits so there's a bus mismatch there but as we've talked about previously um, you can take care of that with the concatenation um, operator uh, that's available in System Verilog. Also um, usually uh, the software uh, will take care of it but in case it doesn't there is that uh, concatenation that you can do to make the buses the same number of bits. Um, uh, well, you can see here that this shows how to concatenate. Um, this is matching the 4-bit A input to the 8-bit D input of our shift register. So we're just putting four zeros in front of whatever the A 4-bit uh, value is. So the same sort of thing can be done over here. Uh, to make the Q output have the same number of bits as the CNT1 input. So let's look at um, the Verilog code for both the accumulator and the shift register. And like I said, this is provided. You just need to uh, download this uh, from PolyLearn. But if you take a look at the Verilog here for the accumulator, uh, you can see there's the three inputs, clock, clear, and load. Um, also input D, okay, that's 8 bits wide. All these inputs are just single bit. And then we have our output uh, Q, that's 8 bits. Uh, we have an asynchronous clear, and uh, we're and we're on, um, this is a rising edge uh, type of accumulator since uh, it's sensitive to the positive edge of the clock. So if the asynchronous active high uh, clear is equal to 1, the register is just going to be cleared, so all the contents, all 8 bits, would just equal 0. Okay, but if we're not clearing, uh, then on the positive edge of the clock, if our load is 1, well, Q, the output of the accumulator, is just equal to what it was previously plus whatever's on the D input. So this is how the accumulator is keeping track of a running total. In fact, that's where the name accumulator comes from. It's accumulating. Its contents are accumulating uh, over time. Uh, also notice that this if statement doesn't have an else, and that's how the accumulator achieves the uh, storage capability where if we're not clearing and we're not loading, well, the accumulator contents are just going to be saved. They're going to be uh, the stored value of what was um, previously uh, the contents. It will just hold on to previous contents uh, in the hold state. So that's how the accumulator works. Now over here is the uh, shift register module. So you have single bit inputs clock and clear 
and then you have uh, an 8-bit input D uh, here's a 2 input select and then we have our output which is also 8 bits and initialized uh, to 0 so on the positive edge so this is also a rising edge um, register well uh, here the the clear is synchronous and if the clear uh, is activated if it's one then um, the contents of the shift register is going to be made all zeros uh, if we're not clearing well then the function of the shift register depends on what the select line is um, if the select line is a one you can see here that's when it's going to load uh, the shift register right that the Q output is just going to equal the D input and if we go back to our we go back to our uh, lower level module here you can see that the D input of the shift register is connected to the A input so in this case when we're loading the shift register we're loading it with our input A which is which is one of the binary numbers that we're uh, multiplying and you can see if the select line is a 2 well then we're shifting left if select line is a 3 we're shifting right now notice there's no 0 option here in the case but that's how we're um, that's how we're getting uh, the hold state that without having the 0 here um, in the case statement well that option now becomes the storage state where the shift register is just going to hold on to uh, the previous contents now in this uh, particular application in our FSM controlled uh, multiplier we're not going to be ever shifting right because shift right would be if you're uh, dividing by a whole number power of two so our shift register will either be holding or loading it or shifting left to do a multiply um, so you'll see that uh, in our timing diagram which is coming up next we never have the select of the shift register uh, equal to a 3 since we're never shifting right in this particular case. Alright, so as we've talked about previously in our lecture videos, to do an FSM design you really need to start with the timing diagram. So here's the timing diagram that we're going to use uh, for Lab 6. Uh, you can see that we have six states, uh, one state hold, uh, start, and then we have um, these four states here, bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, and bit 3. So let's start by looking uh, at the hold state. In the hold state, our SR select is 0, which means that the shift register is just going to hold its contents when it's in this state. Okay. Um, accumulator load is 0 which means in this state we're not loading the accumulator I'm just going to abbreviate accumulator ACC um, and we're not clearing the accumulator in this state so not clearing and we'll remain in the hold state until we get an asserted enter which is uh, by pushing the button and once the button is pushed that's going to start the multiplication process and you can see our first state here or our first state after the enter is asserted uh, labeled start that now the SR select is equal to a 1 so this is when the shift register is going to be loaded so the contents of A will go into the shift register in this state. Um, accumulator load is zero, so the accumulator is not loaded here. Okay, accumulator not loaded. And also, um, at the start, we're going to make sure the accumulator starts with zero content so we clear it so the accumulator uh, contents will be uh, equal to zero in the start state okay then once in the start state on the next uh, clock transition the next uh, positive edge okay this is a rising edge uh, FSM that we have and that's what's meant by this dash here is just unconditional 
okay that we go from the start state to this bit zero state um, as soon as the f next uh, zero to one transition to the clock occurs uh, once we're in the start state okay so in the bit zero state you can see here uh, that now the SR select is a two so we're going to we're going to shift left okay, again if you look at the Verilog code for our module our shift register module you can just go back and look real quick here that when the select is two that's when we're shifting left and um, we're not clearing of course now okay so the this is the uh, accumulator clear so not clearing and also um, now you can see that the accumulator load is no longer part of the state see up here in the hold state and also the start state our accumulator load was just dependent on that state so here it was a more uh, output however now once we get into the bit states this accumulator load well it's going to depend on what a bit of the B input is so it now becomes a melee uh, output from this time on so the way this works is that we're shifting uh, our contents of our shift register which is the A input okay, the A binary um, number that's part of the multiplication but we're only going to use that shifted uh, A input if the B bit okay, and here in bit 0 state as we go to the bit 0 to bit 1 state if the least significant bit of that uh, B input that we're multiplying A by, if it's a 1, then we load the accumulator. So that shifted version will be part of our running total in the accumulator. But if that bit is 0, we're not going to load the accumulator. So even though we're shifting uh, that A input, if this B bit for bit 0 is a 0, we're not using that shifted version of A so that's the equivalent of adding 0 so we're either going to add A or the shifted version of A if the corresponding bit of B is 1 or we're just not going to add it which is again equivalent to adding 0 so if you take a look at all these bit states it's it's the same as what we talked about here it's just we're looking at the next bit of B which will determine whether we load the accumulator or not with that shifted version or we just effectively add zero by not um, loading the accumulator with that shifted version of A and you can see that this all uh, continues in the same manner until we get back to the hold state so this will be the state where uh, we have our final answer and we'll stay in that hold state until the enter is asserted again and then this process just starts all over um, also I would advise that if you haven't already uh, you watch the lecture video that goes over the timing diagram uh, for this uh, shift register using this uh, state diagram because I think it helps uh, understanding especially what's occurring during these bit states uh, by looking at that timing diagram.